In this video, we're going to be exposing the schemes of the enemy. We're talking about his tactics and his tricks that he tries to use to sabotage us and mess with our lives. And I'm going to be giving you all some strategies that you can use to stay on your guard and to protect yourself from his attacks and his spiritual warfare. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Sabine and I love to talk about how to have an abundant life with God at the center and how to take a hold of everything that he has for you. So if that interests you, hit the subscribe button and join the family. So the reason that we're talking about this is because God wants all of his children to be able to withstand the attacks, the schemes, the ploys, the plots of the enemies. We're supposed to be able to handle this and to resist him. So look at the scripture. It's um, Ephesians 6 11. It says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. How can you take your stand against his schemes? When he does launch his attacks, you're going to be equipped to know what to do, how to withstand and to fight back. Exposing the enemy's tactics. Tactics number one. He lies. John 8 44 says there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language for he is a liar and the father of lies. The thing about the enemy is that, um, yeah, he can outright lie, but he also is a master of deception. So sometimes his lies his, is, is more subtle. It's more scheming because he wants to hide what he's doing. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen it says he masquerades as an angel of light. What does that tell you? That tells you that sometimes he's going to present a, a story, uh, an opportunity, uh, something to you that's going to be seemingly good, but it's he's lying. <laughs> Again, he's lying. He can even do this by way of just causing you to question something. He might not even tell you a full bold faced lie, but just cause you to question the truth. And we see this, this is what happens in the book of Genesis with Adam and Eve. The thing that, that, that really gets me about that story is that the, the fall of mankind was all based and hinged upon a question, a question that sparked some, some deception. But here's the scripture. It says, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden. So he poses a question to kind of open up deception. It's, it's not always a bold faced lie. So how does this apply in your life? It could be that he's causing you to say something like, uh, is it really that bad? Is it really uh, a sin, right? To something that you know is, or it could be like God has called you to do something and he's causing you to question like, am I, am I really able to do it? Like, am I, am I ready? Am I, he creates questioning. This is why it's so important to be constantly observing your thoughts, right? Like thinking about what you're thinking about and what's coming in, um, judging each thought because it could start with something as simple as just a question, um, or it could just be a bold faced lie and, and you're, you're, you need to like check that lie and, and get it out of your head and, and call it for what it is. So how you protect yourself from the scheme of his, of his lying is for you to no, 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 the truth, meaning the truth being God's word. So the more you study the word of God, the more you'll be able to discern very clearly whether or not a thought, an idea, something that someone else says lines up with God's truth if you know his word. I love 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verse 5. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So literally, even, even the Bible says that every single thought that comes through your head, you need to bring it into the obedience of, of, of Christ. And we do this with the word of God. So number one way you can avoid his lies is to spend more time in the word, to study the word, to commit the word to memory so that you'll be able to use it as a tool when different ideas come into your head to assess them and to address them with the truth of the word of God. Exposing the enemy's tactics. Tactic number two, he tempts. And 1 John 2.16 mentions three areas in particular that we are susceptible to being tempted in. And it says this, for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. So what exactly are these, these things meaning? The lust of the, the flesh, um, that's kind of obvious. Things that are attractive to your body, so things like food, 
um, drugs, sex, laziness, um, anything that just appeals to your flesh. And the lust of the eyes would be maybe things like, um, you know, materialism. You wanting to get something because it looks good and you have to have it. It could be looking lustfully on someone that you're not supposed to be looking at. That sin gives way to the lust of the flesh. Um, so anything that has to do with, you know, your eyes being taking taking control of you and then the pride of life this one i had to kind of like uh really meditate on a bit like to understand it and i still am understanding it but i'm taking it to me anything in life that you could that could become an idol for you you're making it bigger than god or that that um, you're proud about it and and uh, in a way that's detrimental to you so there's no shortage of ways that we can be tempted but what scripture tells us as far as you know when the devil is tempting it says to resist the devil and he will flee just resist like stand just just don't give in and eventually he's gonna leave you alone and that's that's such a um that promise gives me peace because like we can't really avoid being tempted there's the world is set up to make us every single thing we do outside of our our own home or even watching something um is a temptation to have something for for the pride of life for the lust of the eyes but um it just says to resist um, just don't give in to it and the devil will flee. The temptation will leave you. There's another one that says something that God doesn't give, ever like really tempt anybody beyond the point that they can um, bear. So speaking of um, resisting, like what are the practical ways we can resist? I got some. First way to resist is to just pray when you're tempted. That should be your first instinct, just pray. Matthew 26, 41, this is when Jesus was um, in the garden of um, Gethsemane and waiting for you know his time to go to the cross. And he was asking his, his disciples to stay awake with him. And he says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That speaks for itself right there. Just pray so that you won't fall into temptation. Pray as you're feeling the temptation coming over. You pray and, and that's a way of resisting. Another way you can resist is to affirm scripture over yourself. So find scripture that empowers you in whatever area that it is that you're struggling in and then go ahead and look at that scripture, commit that scripture to memory and then turn it into like an affirmation where you're saying I, you know, blah, 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 so that you can um, say that to yourself, repeat that to yourself, repeat the scripture to yourself. And when the situation arises, because the devil knows, knows, you know, the areas that you're weak in and you know the areas that you're weak in so just be be prepared and when that comes up you can go to your affirmation and say like i will not do that like let's say that you're you're tempted to dishonor your body right um you you go to yourself and you say um you know my body is a temple of the holy spirit like i will not sin against myself i will not sin against god my body is a temple of the holy spirit and you you affirm that when that um comes up as you and then you pray um, so those are some ways that you can like actually in the moment resist. The Bible promises you that if you resist, the devil will flee. So just resist and just stand firm and um, he will leave you alone. Exposing the enemy's tactics. Number three, he accuses. In the book of Revelation, um, we see that it says Satan is the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before God day and night. He accuses us before God as though God doesn't already know everything and as though Jesus didn't already uh, take the fall for our sins, take the fault of our sins, right, on himself. But um, that's one thing that he does. He accuses us before God. He also tries to accuse us in our, in our own thoughts, in our own heads. Like he'll plant seeds, if, if you will. Like I don't believe that he has the power to get into your mind and affect your mind, but I believe he, he, he affects media. He affects things that he knows you're gonna come in contact with so that you can pick up the seed that he's put down. And now you have this thought in your head and you don't know where it came from. So you'll, you'll find yourself accusing your own self and not even know why, like you'll be like, oh, I'm so bad at this. Like, I really don't even, ugh, I don't even deserve this job or I'm such a bad mom. Like, I didn't even feed the kids in time. Where are you getting this accusing spirit from? You know it's not not from you and you know it's not, not from God because why would you be against you, right? Like, that doesn't make sense. And God already tells you you're chosen, you're loved, you're forgiven. So anytime you feel those accusatory thoughts, just know right then and there is the enemy. He he planted a seed somewhere, he put it down and you picked it up and you're, you're carrying it around. So the best way to uh, fight against this 
uh, this accusation is to be vigilant of your thoughts, your, your thought life, what's what's going on in your brain. And um, there's a scripture actually, Romans 12 2. I love this scripture. I could just say this all day. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. So how do you renew your mind? You need to take inventory of your thoughts. Um, and when I say take inventory of your thoughts, let me break it down even further. I mean, like, spend some quiet time, have a moment to yourself to to sit still and listen to your thoughts, assess how you're feeling, think about, you know, what's been going on in your brain and look at your thoughts objectively and see how do these thoughts line up with the truth that is the word of God. And if any of them don't, like um, we read the scripture earlier that said casting down imaginations, like take down those thoughts that are not true and make them submit to to Christ and what the word of God says about you. So um, tr that's, that's what I think of when I think of renewing your mind. Every single day you need to renew. So go to the scriptures that are building you up. So be vigilant over your mind. It, it's it's a, so many um, principalities and forces in the world want to have some real estate in your brain. And that's, that's your domain. That's your territory. And you say what thoughts say and what thoughts go. And everyone that comes in, you need to almost put it on trial. Do you belong here? Do you have authority here? Like who sent you? Yes, you can say no, you got to go. Bye. Don't be scared to talk back to the enemy. I, that's one of the things that like I really, really love that I learned. The idea of talking back. I'm sorry, what was that? What did you just say? Um, sir, you, you got kicked out of heaven. You don't even have any rightful authority to tell me anything about my life. When in fact, I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ. I'm a conqueror and co-heir. So watch your mouth, like watch who you're talking to. You need to get some like, get some fight in you when you're talking to him because you can't just let him talk to you any kind of way crazy, accusing you coming up in, like I said, your house, your mental real estate. No, like you have to fight back. And the way you do it is with the word and you speak the truth and you denounce and you you rebuke anything that's not true even even in conversation with other people sometimes he'll he'll speak something like i said a seed is planted and it's something someone else says something someone feels about themselves and you and they'll say like oh girl you know you don't need to be doing that like people like us don't mm, i rebuke that i will say it out loud like i i will like i'll say it under my breath if it's not appropriate to say it out loud but if it's somebody that i know i'll be like no i don't receive that I don't receive that. I don't, I don't think that. So, I mean, speak for yourself on that one. Um, but yeah, say say no to things that are not true. Say like, I disagree. I, I don't I don't align with that. And and then speak the truth over yourself and your life and your loved ones. And um, yeah, don't let him accuse you. Don't do it. Speak back. Speak up. Fight back. Okay. So those are the three tactics that the enemy uses. Um, there could be more. There there are more. I'm sh I'm sure. But um, those are the three that the Lord led me to share with you today that he brought to my attention. So I hope that uh, this video blessed you, that it spoke to you, and um, that you're going to use these tactics to fight back, to protect your peace, to not let him sabotage anything in your life, honey. So I have another idea of doing a video. Let me know if you all are interested in this, but more on like how to hear the voice of God. Because for example, we talked about today how you, how you don't, how you know it's not, like how this is what the enemy does. But um, let me know if you all are interested in that topic or any others that you want to hear about, please do let me know. Uh, I love to speak to the areas that I can help in. So let me know that in the comments. I have some other info for you in the description on how you can support this channel, some cool stuff that you can follow up on. And I'm definitely going to have some videos linked for you up here and in the description below. So thank you so much for tuning into my channel. If this helped you, if this blessed you, I would love for you to share it um, or share another one of my videos or watch another one of my videos to pray for me and and that you know this channel will continue to connect with the right people and to empower you all to just like live your best lives and to have an abundant life with Christ at the center with God at the center and to go after everything that God has for you so thank you so much for tuning in I'll see y'all soon